Hey everybody, welcome back to the Carry Cut YouTube channel. And if you're new here, I sure do appreciate you stopping by and watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Also check out our Instagram at Carry Cut and our Patreon at Carry Cut. Really do appreciate all the support from the patrons. It does help out the channel tremendously. All the proceeds go directly back into the channels by new knives and new equipment to make the quality and the content better for you guys. So today, what are we looking at? We got the K-Bar Dozier. This thing is definitely pretty cool. This is another one of Jimmy Crow's knives that he sent over for us to take a look at and uh, do a review on. So Jimmy, really do appreciate that. This thing is a awesome little outdoors inspired. It's a K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter is what they claim, call it to be, not claim it to be. That is what they call it. But uh, this thing is definitely pretty cool. It's a nice, super like ultra kind of lightweight before the bug out was even a thing. This thing is definitely an older knife. And uh, it's just a pretty... I want to say iconic. This is uh, the first one I've ever handled, but I've seen these things for years. And, you know, K-Bar is a really well-known and well-respected brand in the knife community. I know they did a lot of stuff for the military and all that kind of stuff, too. And, you know, just a lot of iconic designs and great quality come out of the um, K-Bar, came under the K-Bar name, and they still do to this day. So this is a Dozier design, you know, K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter. So pretty cool. We do have a, uh, you know, Zytel handle material. I was doing some research on this thing, and that was actually the handle material they call this thing Zytel. I have no idea what that is. To me, it kind of looks like an uh, injection-molded plastic, something like how Spyderco does on their injection-molded handles. We do have some nice kind of diamond, you know, I want to call it even a, uh, maybe even like a pyramid-type texture. You know, I'll just go ahead and say diamonds. It is, you know, it does give you some actual good, useful traction going on here. I really do like the, you know, the dark, dark green color they have going on here. And then we do have like a Coyote kind of FDE-ish. I'm not sure what the actual coating on the blade is, but it definitely feels like a nice pretty tough coating, maybe like a Cerakote or something like that. And we do have a matching backspacer and clip. Not backspacer, this is the back spring. And the clip's all the same matching color. So this thing is definitely, you know, kitted out. Really do like all the color combinations going on here with the dark, dark, like hunter green with the um, kind of like a Coyote sand desert inspired thing. It's definitely pretty cool. And I really do like it. So the blade, we do have a hollow ground D2 blade. We're looking at 57 to 59 on the Rockwell hardness, which is, I think, pretty average for a D2. Still a pretty, you know, pretty good fan of D2. It's, uh, you know, not very stainless at all, but it is tough and it does hold an edge for a really good long time. And it is kind of tricky to sharpen. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're a new person looking into this thing. And, you know, speaking of a new person looking into this, the price is, you know, pretty outstanding. I know on the K-Bar website, they're hovering around $50, but on Amazon, you can find this one right here. Maybe not this exact color, but you can find like a blue one with the same color blade for $39.09, which is, you know, pretty cool. Definitely great to see that. This is a Taiwan, a Taiwan made, made knife. So, you know, you can look forward to that. Taiwan does make some very good stuff, but we do have a single side thumb stud but i'm pretty sure that you can definitely make this mount either way so you can flip the pocket clip onto this side you can also move your thumb screw onto this side here your thumb screw your thumb stud over to this side as well so this is truly a very truly ambidextrous knife especially with this back lock mechanism which does work very well and you can even flick this thing out with some good authority or you could do the good old fashioned slow roll, whatever you want to do. It is fairly smooth for being a back lock. And, uh, you know, it's not everybody's favorite lock in the world, but it does get the job done. It is a very strong, sturdy knife. You know, there's nothing chintzy feeling about it, which I do like. And one thing I really do appreciate is this sharpening coil here. Look how great that one is. A lot of companies could definitely learn something from this. I mean, you're going to get a good bit of sharpening on this, especially with this hollow grind that, you know, you know it's going to keep, that's the bit of a hollow grind. You know, you're getting the same thickness of that all the way down to the edge thickness up, you know, a pretty good bit. You know, it's really going to extend the life of your blade, at least the sliciness of it. And, you know, one thing talking about the slicing of the sliciness of this thing, I'm talking it up. This thing slices through paper like it's nobody's business, too. So I'm not sure if this is the factory edge that comes on this or not. I did look at the website and they say it comes with 18 degrees on the edge, but this edge, this it almost looks like, you know, polished, like it's been touched up by somebody else, though. So I'm not sure if Jimmy's actually um, put his own edge on this thing or not. But it is extremely, extremely sharp. And we do have nice thin blade stock, too. So that's definitely helping. I bet it's probably around the 11,000s-ish, something like that. Let's go ahead and measure it up. Yep, right at 11,000. So that's pretty good. It's definitely, um, you know, just a great, useful knife. And it's a lightweight 
easy to carry, you know, no real frills. There's nothing really crazy going on. You know, it kind of reminds me of a, you know, I feel like this would be a good Delica competitor. You know, it's pretty much similar in the nature and aspect of what it's trying to achieve. You know, a nice lightweight, I feel like this thing might even be tougher. I'm not sure, but the difference between D2 and uh, VG10 on the toughness, but I know the blade stock thickness is definitely thicker on the K-Bar, and it really does come to a really nice, robust tip out there at the edge, you know, compared to Spyderco's super paper thin. So I would definitely put this thing through more stress than this one. And another great thing about this knife is we have two screws holding this whole thing together. So the pocket clip comes through. It's kind of like how a pivot works, how there's like a... Um, I don't really, it's not a nut, but you screw the pivot into the actual um, hardware, whatever you want to call it. But we have a two screw design, so it keeps things very minimal, very easy to work on and maintain, I imagine. I bet we do have some cor some kind of uh, phosphor bronze washers in this pivot. Maybe not phosphor bronze, but it's definitely going to be a washer style in the pivot. So this thing is definitely sweet. And I like, I really do like this a lot. I could, I, you know, I could see me picking up one of these for myself personally. And, uh, you know, using this out of the camper or anything like that, you know, just taking it out outdoors. Don't have to worry about this thing rusting in particular because it has a nice coating on the blade. So that's always nice to see, too. Yeah, really cool. I really do like it. Um, let's go ahead and do some size while we're at it. I was getting too carried away, not even thinking about doing some sizes. I was going to end this video already. All right, so from the tip to the end, we're right at seven and a quarter inches. So that's pretty nice carry profile. This thing is definitely super nice and thin. Let's go ahead and get the actual. We're looking at uh, under a half an inch, just over a third of an inch. So that's pretty good. 0.41. Let's go ahead and get Miss Carry Cut Kitchen Scale out. I need to throw a sticker on this thing. Maybe I'll do that. A little uh, shameless plug there for Carry Cut stickers. They came out great. Really do love them. Look good on hard hats, back cell phones, on the wife's minivan, wife's Tahoe, whatever it is. Okay, so we got 2.3 ounces, so that's pretty good. I didn't even measure the total cutting length of the blade, did I? 2.3 ounces, and I'm pretty sure this is a 3-inch blade. Let's go ahead and look. Yep, we're 3, three inches on the blade. Cutting edge is almost, nah, it's more than 2.5, but not quite 2 and 3 quarters, so that's still pretty good, though. 2.3 for 3 inches of blade. That's pretty nice to see. That definitely comes down to this um, Zytel, whatever they call it. Handle material, never heard that one before, but I kind of do like how they got this, um, sorry guys, I like how they have the um, the handle, you can kind of see where it comes together right there, right there, it's not like, it's sandwiched together, but there's no, you know, actual backspace or anything going on like that, but it's, uh, you know, favoring one side, so this scale is actually thicker than this one, and it kind of weaves its way around the back spring, which is definitely pretty cool to see, got you guys all off center now. All right, hey, let's do some uh, size comparisons while we're at it. How about the QSP Parrot? That's going to be a pretty similar size right there. I'm going to put him up there. Let's go with, uh, of course, the Spyderco Delica. I feel like this is going to be a pretty good main competitor to this thing, and they're definitely well-known knives. They've been around the block a time or two, and they're pretty much the exact same size. And let's go over and get the Ontario Rat Model 2. All right, and we're pretty much, you know, you can't go pivot to pivot on this thing because it's not actually there, but it's definitely going to be pretty similar to that exact same size. So, you know, a great sub 3-inch, three 3-inch three pocket knife, 3-inch bladed pocket knife. They're all pretty similar in the size range. So, yeah, and for the price of this thing, the ergonomics of it, the, you know, tough, hard-use nature of it, I guess you could say, or just rugged, ruggedness. That might be the word I'm looking for. Um, it's definitely a pretty viable option especially for your $39. I mean, this could be a knife that somebody could have for 15, 20 years until they lose it or sharpen the blade down so much we have to buy a new one or, you know, whatever. So this is good, you know, somebody that's not into the, you know, crazy button locks or crossbar locks or anything like that. So like if somebody is like into, you know, some case knives or buck knives, something with a, you know, more traditional back lock and don't need all that kind of crazy stuff, if you hand them one of these, they're going to be able to use this thing all day and look pretty stylish with it and getting the job done. So make sure you guys check out this thing. I will have a link down in the description below. And Jimmy, thank you very much for sending this over for us to take a look at. And I appreciate it. Till next time.